In today's tutorial, learn how to make a hexagonal baby afghan. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Today's tutorial we're going to work on this particular afghan and I've designed it in a way that you can go as big as you want to and it will not buckle meaning that it won't gain any extra stitches so that it will always continue to lay flat. Now the pattern that I designed for this is for a baby but you can just continue to go bigger and bigger and bigger. If you're going to do a baby size I'd recommend two of these big balls. These are ten and a half ounces or 300 grams whatever you prefer and there is a lot of yarn on this and you can find this in major retailers near you. So without further ado let me tell you a little bit more about, about this and get started. The trick with hexagons is that we have to worry about the corners and we also have to worry about the stitches in between and if you put too many stitches in between then you end up with buckling meaning that you'll get ruffling and if there's too little then it will start compressing and doing bowl shape just like so. So the idea is to get it perfect each and every time. Now what I found with myself in the design is that we have to get you past the first three uh, revolutions and then after that it's absolutely identical and just like a normal granny square the only difference is from every square that we every rotation we move up to see is that there's one and then there goes two and then there's three because there's more gapping spaces just like this. So it just becomes very easy. I did this in a matter of minutes to be quite honest with you. A baby afghan or like this, like this would not take you very long at all. So we're going to be using a size L, an eight millimeter crochet hook today and we are going to be using the baby Bernat yarn to do this pattern. So let's get ready. Remember size eight millimeters, size L crochet hook today. We're just going to start off with the slip knot just like you see here. And remember there's other tutorials available on learning how to crochet if you're not familiar with it. Let's put our hook on to into the loop itself and remember that that never counts as one. Let's begin and we are going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and please insert your hook into the beginning chain to form a ring. So just go into the beginning chain, grab that yarn and pull through and through and you have the very big center ring just like this. Now with the straggler I want you to just wrap it around as if it's part of the of the circle so that we can lose it so we never have to see the beginning tail ends. Okay let's begin our first revolution and here we go. We're going to chain three. So one, two, and three and we're going to create six groups of three double crochet. Remember in crochet that this first one that we just did of the chaining three counts as a double crochet. So we have to do two more double crochets into the center of the ring to complete that group of three. Okay so you got two in there and then every time you finish a group of three you're going to chain one. Okay so let's do another three double crochets. So now that we've already done our chain one the first time we just have to slam in our double crochets in groups of three. So here's another group of three and then we chain one. Let's do another one. So you want a total of six. Okay and that will give you your six sides that you need for hexagonal afghan just like we're doing today. And continue along. So now I'm, I'm halfway around. You'll notice that you will start getting tighter and tighter into the center is exactly what you want. So remember chain one before starting another group of three. Okay and here's another group and this is number four and then chain one and do another group of three and this is going to be the fifth group. Okay so there is the five. So if you're running out of stitches which we are we just have to slide. See that? Because it's just around the loop but you can just slide it out of the way. Chain one and then begin the next group. So the advantage to this particular afghan is that uh, it's thick, it's soft but it actually breathes. So if you're in a climate where a baby doesn't need to be sweating, <laughs> sweating all the time then it's a great opportunity because this will breathe. So we got one, two, three and I'm counting the number of groups of three. So I got one, two, three, four, five and six and then to finish off is that we're just going to chain one and then just join it to the top of the beginning chain three. Okay 
So make sure you count that double check. So one, two, three, four, five, and six groups of three and let's move on. So let's move along to our next group. So what I have in this every time in my pattern that you're finishing off you always have to then move your slip stitch yourself to the next chain one space. See how we're already attached there. If you go backward it's gonna look awkward. So we're just gonna slip ourselves into the next stitch available and pull through and through. That's a slip stitch and the next one through and through. That's the next slip stitch and then finally we're into the gapping space. So go right into the gap and slip stitch to begin the next row. So you're gonna do that each and every time. So let's begin this round. This round again is really simple. So we're gonna start off by chaining three. One, two, and three. Remember that counts as a double crochet. So in the corners what's gonna happen each and every time from here on until, <laughs> until you're done you're going to put in three double crochets as together. Okay, remember that uh, chaining of three already counts as one. So you have three, then you're going to chain one and then put three more into the same space. So this is what your corner is gonna look like each and every time. Okay, and that's remember there's six corners for because it's a hexagonal. So let's begin. So we're now going to chain one and we're going to complete the next corner. So remember what I said. So the corners are always three double crochet and then followed by a chain one. Okay, and then three double crochet into the same uh, chain one space. Oops, I missed that one that time. <laughs> I love this uh, particular kind of yarn. It goes so fast is that you can whip off afghans in no time. So once you got that done, chain one and we're gonna be playing in this gapping space that you're creating with the chain one in the next round. So we have another corner. Okay, so continue to do your corners for this particular round and I'll meet you back in just a moment and we'll show you how to finish this round and start out with the next. And remember that the corners are always three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet. So we're just finishing up this round. You can see the six sides are now starting to take its shape and then remember before you uh, join it to the, to the first one you have to chain one first and then just join it to the top of the beginning chain three. And then that concludes that round. So this is round number two. So round number three is about then establishing the pattern and making it really easy to follow this, this part forward. So let's continue. Let's begin round number three. So round number three we're going to slip stitch ourselves to the first chain one space. Okay, so let's just do what we've already know. And just slip stitch over. And we're moving ourselves into a position so that we can start off the next round perfectly. So here is the chain one space and we're ready to go and you can tell we're in the middle of a corner. Okay, so because that's where the next chain one space is. So we're going to chain up three, one, two, and three and form another corner right into the same space. So the corners are the, always the same. Three double crochet, a chain one, three double crochet. Remember for the first stitch up that's chaining a three that counts as one double crochet. So the only difference between this round and all of the other rounds going forward is the amount of chain spaces in between the corner section. Okay, so you have your corner now in. So three double crochets, chain one. So right now is that the next corner is over here but there's a gap in the way. So what we do with the gaps from going from here on forward, the only difference between every round is that there's more gaps. So we're gonna chain one first and then put two double crochets right into this gapping space. So one and two, that's it. And then once you've done that, chain one. And then you move to the next corner. So the corner is always the same, three double crochet. And do you see in my hands that this afghan is not buckling? So if there's a problem with the stitch counting at this point you would start to see it bowl in or you'd start to see it ruffle extra. But right now it's perfect. So your corner's in, you chain one first, here's the next gap and there's only gonna be two double crochets into that gap. So going forward all the gap spaces in between the corners are always only gonna be two followed by a chain one and then a corner. So continue to do that all the way around. I'll see you in back in just a moment. I'll take you to the next round and just show you that there is more gaps and basically you can just go off, watch TV and enjoy the rest of your pattern. Once you get all the way back around you'll have the gapping space. Okay, remember that you have to chain one first which I've already done off camera and then we just simply just join it to the beginning of the chain three. So this is what it looks like at this point. 
See, so it's still sitting flat. So the only difference is that there's gonna be more gapping spaces in the corner. So let's begin our next revolution and this will be the same going forward. Just gotta keep in mind there will be more gapping spaces each and every time you go around. So beginning our, our next round, this is gonna be the same. We're going to slip stitch again ourselves to the chain one space. And that is the very corner. And we start off with the corner piece. Okay, so we're gonna just chain three, one, two and three and then just put in your two more double crochets into that. It's the first side of the corner. Chain one and then continue the other side. So with the other three double crochets in. Okay and once you have that done remember chain one and then you have your gapping spaces. So this time you have two instead of one. So there's gonna be two double crochets in the first one followed by a chain one and then two double crochets into the next because there's another gapping space before the corner followed by a chain one and then you do your corner. See, not very hard and uh, this is when you can start just kick back, relax, enjoy the pattern and you can go as big or as small as you want to and this would be how you complete it. Once you get to the size that you want just fasten off, weave in your ends and you have an amazing little afghan blanket. You can go as big as you want to so it doesn't have to be little. It can be any size that you wish. Till next time, Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see ya.